Welcome to the Heaven on Earth podcast, a world where you study the story you were born into and redesign it into the story you choose, a world where you can have heaven on earth right here, right now, no matter the past. For me, heaven on earth is a holistic experience, leading with the heart, engaging with mind, body, and spirit. It's mindful, fostering calm and secure attachments. As we rise into consciousness, it's an earthly journey where we sensually embrace dynamic living. My main concept in everything that I do is that humanity has to come back to itself. It's the idea of coming home coming home to the self. Tara Brock, who is a leader in the meditation community, she's one of the Buddhist meditation grand philosophers, says every sickness is a homesickness. And I love that in terms of holistic beliefs that It's not just in the body our sickness is, it's in the mind, the heart, and the spirit. Every sickness is a homesickness. And Ram Das, who again was another huge figure in the meditation community, said we are all just here to walk each other home. Just the idea of coming home is so beautiful. The scripture of the prodigal son, the prodigal son who left home and did all this crazy stuff and spent money. And when he came back, his father received him with open arms. And the beauty in that Because, of course, biblically is the idea that God always has a home for us, that we come home. And in 12-step communities, right, the idea is that the 12-step rooms are a home, are a home to come home to the self. Because... For example, the idea of addictions or alcoholism or any type of ism, any type of ism, alcoholism, sexism, racism, are is a way that we have left ourselves, that we are so far away from ourselves. So let's track it from an individual's perspective and the collective perspective. When an individual has an addiction, it's because they don't feel at home. They don't feel securely attached. They don't feel like they belong. So any addiction is actually signaling a lack of belonging a lack of belonging to their family, to themselves. So what starts to happen is this reaching out of ourselves to see where we can belong. Because belonging is delicious. Being at home is delicious. It is the elixir of life to say, oh, I just love being at home, right? So addictions, alcoholism, that, that, that drink, that fix, gives us this sensation, this whole body sensation of, of deliciousness, of dopamine, of serotonin, oxytocin, makes us feel at home. So we're looking for being at home somewhere else. For the empath, for example, and I'm talking about the individual right now, for the empath, 
codependence is a way, is an attempt to be at home. We will attach, we will try to belong to someone else. We will attach the concept of saving someone else. That's the codependent, that's the enabler, that's the wounded empath, not, not the healed empath. But it doesn't matter because it's the story of the individual human that is trying to find a place to belong, to attach, to feel at home. Okay? So if we move it over here to the collective, to, to all of us, to humanity, humans, humanity has left itself. Hold on, let me go back, let me go back. When we become addicts and alcoholics, we begin to be so far away from ourselves. When we are so wounded, victimized in our trauma, we begin to be so far away from home, from ourself, that when we try to come back, what we find are the obstacles of fear, of guilt, of shame, of self-loathing. So who wants that as we walk our way back home? Who wants that? That's why we don't want to detox. That's why we don't want to look inside because we're afraid of the monsters inside of us and the monsters inside of us is I up. I'm bad. Those are the monsters. Spoiler alert. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible human being. I loathe myself. That's why we don't meditate. We don't go to therapy. We are running for our lives away from ourselves because we are afraid of those monsters, of those demons. So we are away from ourselves. So as we track back we don't want to see that. So we begin to even go farther away from ourselves. We drink even more. We use even more. We porno even more. We work even more. Because the walk back home, el camino, el camino, which means the, the path, like el camino de Santiago, that has a huge metaphorical meaning. It's the quest for the Holy Grail. The quest for the Holy Grail requires that we face our demons, that we slay our demons, that we, in my case, not so much slay, but befriend them. We befriend the shadow, as Carl Jung used to say. We befriend the shadow. And so the walk back home to the self requires help, requires people along the way who have compassion, who see us with the beautiful gaze, unconditional regard, Carl Rogers used to say. Carl Rogers used to say, therapy is unconditional regard. We get to hold space. We get to put in the middle of the therapy room, in the middle of the meditation room, which is inside of yourself, all of that gunk. We get to categorize it. We get to heal it. We get to put balm on it so that the walk back home to the self even though some of it is brutal as I call it we spelunk if you don't know the word spelunk spelunk is when you go caving and you go through these really tight narrow you're crawling yourself on the earth to finally get to this beautiful open cave with waterfalls that is the journey of coming home we crawl ourselves through some of our feelings and fears. And, but mostly, the spoiler alert is where all of us are headed. The biggest monster at the end, there is this movie called Pan's Lambert. It's a Spanish movie. It's beautiful because there's one scene that I thought, oh, this is what we do as humans, where she has to, in order to get, I, th I think it was some sort of, gadget or locket or some something some treasure in order to save her family her mother she had to spelunk through this horrible gunky slimy hallway um, and she got to this horrible stinky stenchy enormous toad with a long tongue and that's where she had to find the treasure well, that big, smelly, stenchy, slimy toad is the fact that we believe that we are bad and unworthy of love. 
And that's where we stop. And that's what we avoid is that something's going to tell us we're bad. Humanity, our parents, our abuser, whatever tells us we are bad. And the spoiler alert is that's the big monster. And yet there is something on the other side which is self-love. And spiritualities and God and 12-step programs tell us that on the other side of that big, stinky, stenchy, disgusting toad that tells us that we're bad and unworthy is this beautiful light. So I always say graduation is self-love. Ultimate graduation is that we love ourselves no matter what we did, no matter who we are. We love ourselves. And Lester Levinson, who was a physicist that I quote a bunch in Dynamic Meditation Method, he says, when the love is complete, the problem is solved in anything when the love is complete. But it requires the Holy Grail the quest, the coming home. That quest is to get back to the castle, to, to the beautiful maiden waiting, to the father with open arms, to the hearth, to the fireplace, to mama's cooking. Those are the vibrations. To the, to the dog with the wagging tail. That's coming home. Those are the human sensations of being loved and welcomed with warmth, affection, and care. Care. Okay. Check it out. So everything is coming home. And so on the way back home, we need places to stop. We need places to rest. We need, we need other travelers along the journey. El Camino de Santiago, that's what you do. You stop in places and all the places, the restaurants and the hotels and the lodgings along the way, they know that there's going to be travels on El Camino, on the path to Santiago, on El Camino to Santiago, on the way back home. We need therapists, we need coaches, we need groups, we need 12-step fellows, we need fellow journeyers, we need other empaths who are doing the deep dive work. We need laughter, we need hammocks, we need food, we need a toolkit. We need a guide. We need someone who's who's ahead, who says, don't worry, it's going to look like this, but this is what you do. We need instructions, we need a manual, Humanity 101, on the way back home, on the way back home, it's beautiful. So just as addictions or just as any type of way that we are farther and farther and farther away from ourself, from our home in the self, humanity does the same thing. This is my whole premise. Humanity has left itself, attacks itself, tortures itself, sex trades itself, Sex trades its children's self. All the isms, racism, sexism, genderism, all of them are a way of being away from the self, just like addiction. And so, of course, right, if as a person we're, we don't want to hear that we're bad and we attack ourselves and we have a horrible inner dialogue and we attack our babies because we hate ourselves, because we hate ourselves because we are in self-loathing and away from ourself as a human, that's when we start to spew out into humanity. The people who've caused genocide and who are homicidal and suicidal, because it's all the same thing. It's about, hey, I hate myself so much that I'm going to kill myself. I hate others so much that I'm going to kill them. Whether that's in our neighborhood whether it's that's because um, of marital abuse, whether that's because of war or genocide, whether that's because we take a whole people and we say, because I hate myself, I'm going to hate a whole people and I'm going to destroy them. Get this, though. That is the story. That is the narrative of humankind. That is what we've done to ourselves. We haven't seen that we're all just human. 
All the ways that we say we claim to be separate from others, even though they all have the same operating system than we do, the operating system of emotions, of imagination, of sensations in the body. Same exact operating system, which is why we love watching movies, even if they're foreign films, even if they're international films in languages we don't understand, where we can see human emotions. That's why we love the memes of the soldiers coming home, of happy dogs, of, of little toddlers running into their parents' arms. That is why, because it is the grand human metaphor of coming home. So it's the same thing whether you're one person or you're a million people. It's the fact that we are loathing ourselves and destroying ourselves. So my call out is in my, in my day job, in all of my programs, is like come home to you, get a PhD on you and come home to you. Because on our way home, it requires that we get a PhD on ourselves. What am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? Why do I think this? What are my mental patterns? And we have modalities. In my case, I offer the ones that I offered, the dynamic meditation method, to actually start untying those internal knots of self-loathing, of fear, of shame, of guilt, of jealousy, of possessiveness, of all of that, of panic, of post-traumatic stress disorder. Those are all clogging up clog, 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 our human operation system, our human technology is clogged, is backlogged with trauma, with terrible memories, backlogged. So we got to go in and clean that up. That's what we do in dynamic. That's what we do in meditation. That's what we do in sound therapy, sound healing. That's what psychedelics do. It starts to unclog us and it is time. Why is it time, you all? Because this, have you noticed? Have you noticed that everyone's social media books? Have you noticed that everyone's talking about this? Trauma healing, trauma informed, and in my case, trauma rising because it's time to rise out of humanity's trauma, our own human trauma, our ancestral trauma. All that backlog, cleaning up, shredding, recycling out, but not recycling into our babies any, not anymore, not perpetuating the trauma. So humanity, my call out now is it's getting bigger. It went from the individual, my private practice, working one-on-one -on -one with people. It is about calling out humanity but it's the same exact idea, the same exact strategy. Come home to yourself, humanity. Notice that we are human, that on the inside, same imagination. We desire the same things for our children. We all want money and we should have it. We all want resources and we should have it. We all want a warm bath and we should have it. And we have to take care. We all want water and food and we should have it as a humanity. The basics, healthcare, care in general, caring for the elderly, caring for people who have been orphaned, the children, caring, come back, come back, come back home, humanity. So one of the things that came to me, I have these ideas that come to me in a dream. And I think, of course, they're coming from um, the higher consciousness, the quantum field, angelic frequencies, whatever we want to call it. it I, I use all of it interchangeably because I do believe that we are here in the material. We are beautifully incarnated into this life, but also that we have contact with the invisible that is trying to help us to free higher frequencies 
beautiful frequencies. Give me a higher love, like what Whitney Houston says, a higher love that wants us to come back home, that keeps reminding us, you are beautiful humans. You're not taking advantage of your lives, of this beautiful life, of the sunlight, of laughing, of being in groups together, of intimacy, of sitting on the couch, putting your head on someone's lap while they, while they touch your hair, intimacy. Of when your baby reaches out for you, human intimacy all over the world. All humanity has this. Of reaching out for someone's hand for the first time. Oh, blissful human intimacy coming back, coming back to our human technology, our human operating system. And that requires that we clean it out from the self-loathing, from the self-hate. And therefore, we are less likely to pass it on. So we got to stop the self-loathing we got to clean up on the way back home, on El Camino, back home, to the self with a capital S. We are doing the same exact thing with humanity. Humanity has got to come home and realize that we are humans. One of the, the ways that I see, for example, this there's a whole conversation right now about extraterrestrials. It's always been around, but now it seems like there just seems to be more documentation coming out. But the way that I see it is, oh, okay, maybe if humanity discovers and believes that there are extraterrestrials, we will start seeing ourselves as a whole humanity, as one because vis-a-vis -vis other creatures, vis-a-vis -vis other entities that I, I don't happen to believe that anyone out there in the invisible or in the galactics or in the universe is evil, personally. It's not my type of paradigm. Anyone can choose the paradigm by which they live. It's not the paradigm by which I live, obviously, right? I host a podcast called Heaven on Earth. It is my belief, it is my paradigm that I live by that we can find love and we can find loving entities and loving humans. But anyway, getting back to that is the fact that maybe then we will actually, if we know that there are other entities that are different from us, not bad or wrong, but different from us, let's say, then we can come together as a humanity. Because sometimes when we see that, that we are a group, that we are a collective through whatever reasons, sometimes when, I don't know if you've ever experienced traveling to another country and you see another American and you say hello. Personally, anytime, anytime I hear an accent that's a Latino accent or I notice that someone's Latino, whether... They are passing me in, in, in the grocery line. I make sure that I speak in Spanish, that I greet in Spanish. And what am I saying? Hey, I know you. I'm Latina too. I speak Spanish. And they can choose or not whether they want to speak in Spanish or, or recognize our joint identity. It's okay what they do. But I am going to reach out and say, I have a joint identity with you. And what I want to do through this podcast, through this Heaven on Earth podcast, through my books, through all of it is say, hey, I am joined in my identity with you as a human. We are humans. I am a colorful human. You are a colorful human. That's what I'm after. It's so funny. I didn't plan this podcast. It's a Saturday morning here. I'm in my Saturday gear and I just pop this open to start talking because I could feel it moving through me. I could feel myself asking, what are my main concepts? What are my main concepts? Is the human coming back to the self with a capital S? It's humanity coming back to itself. And it's, it's in my books, I call it the a priori. A priori is a Latin phrase that means before. 
before the layers, it's almost like the prologue of life, the prologue of the concept, the a priori concept, which is the base layer. And I feel like I'm garnishing some expertise in the root chakra. The root chakra is the first energetic chakra. And what does the root chakra provide? Stability, safety, and security first. Because if that layer, think of the foundation of a house, if that layer is not there or it's gone or it's broken, that's trauma, by the way, then all the other chakras go like this. It's like Jenga. It, like, it just goes, it's the leaning tower of Pisa, of humanity. That certainly happened to me. I mean, I've healed and I've changed that now, but my root chakra was off. I didn't feel like I belonged. I didn't feel securely attached. All of that. And so the rest of life is structured on top of the root chakra, on the a priori chakra, on the beginning foundational ideas. And so I am suggesting, I am proposing, I am inviting that we come back to the a priori ways of being human. And on Instagram, that's what I post. I post about human intimacy. I post about how we commune with each other. I post about oneness. And oneness just means, I just posted something about a group of Korean guys singing gospel beautifully about us being one people and we learn from each other. We do relish in one another. We relish in each other's inventions and thoughts and music. We relish in our humanity because those are all basic human urges, human creations, the way we think, we imagine, and we feel, the way we connect it's in us all. And so my urge, my desperate a priori urge is to bring us back. And my whole life represents that. My work, my work with clients, my work in my workshops, empath leader. So let's talk about the empath leader. Why I'm highlighting the empath so much. The empath has an uncanny ability to feel to not just feel empathy, which is the ability to see others' points of view or to feel what others might be going through. That's empathy. Again, that's all part of the human experience and the human operating system. Empathy initiates care. And I posit that care is what keeps us surviving as a species. When we care for one another, when we help each other cross the road, when we help each other when someone's at the back of the group, when we give each other our seat, when we give each other shelter, when we create underground railroads, when we provide shelter during the Nazi regime, when we form organizations to stop sex trafficking, when we care and empathy initiates care, it is important. It is not woo. It is not a soft skill. It is actually an immense, humongous operating technology that we've got that has helped us survive as a human species. It has helped us survive Darwinian philosophy, survival of the fittest. Because of care, we have helped the non-fit. Because of care, empathy that leads to care, that leads to us initiating help, has helped us keep alive the non-fit, the weak, the aging, the sick. It is not a soft skill to care. And care is, for me, for me, I've identified it as different than love. Because we can care for someone we don't even know. I've been carrying bags and I'll have someone swoop in and say, hey, let me help you carry. They don't know me, but they're caring. They feel empathy. They know what it's like to carry a bunch of bags. 
I'll never forget. There was one time I was at a cafe and I was sobbing, sobbing because I had to give a workshop and something, my, my computer went black. This was in the, yeah, late nineties. And there was a guy sitting next to me. And do you know, he came over and sat with me and spent hours and not only that, we got up, we, he said, let's look for a place that might be able to bring up your material. We found a place. He walked with me to that place. I'll never forget it. And then once he saw that it was going to be okay, you know, I thanked him profusely. I gave him a hug, humanity, because hugs are an expression. And I said, thank you so much. And I never forgot him. Care, human care. I have so many examples of human care, and so do you. And it is a way that we don't kill ourselves as a humanity or as humans. It is a priori. I am inviting us to come back to our a priori human existence, human operating system. And we have modalities along the way, and we need them. We need others. We need tools. We need a blueprint. We need a manual. We need instructions. We need places of rest. We need food and water. Amanda Flaker, she's a huge um, thought leader in terms of building this new earth and what the earth and what has been the history of the earth, which is the lack matrix. She talks about the lack matrix, the shadow contracts that keeps the lack matrix together and how she urges us to come back to loving our humanity, to come back. And she talks about the concept of the win, 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 which is loving the self, loving others, and loving the planet. That's where it's at. It's pretty simple. But it, in my case, I believe that it starts with the self, with a capital S. We can't just love others, which is, okay, so what I was talking about before, sorry, I, I start to trip up, but remind me, and I'm reminding myself to talk about the planet because it's because the planet is our home, you all. The planet is our home. It's humanity's home. And it's got everything we want. It's got mountains and oceans and rivers and warmth and cold picket. It's got beauty. It's got food for us. It's got water for us. And we are trashing Mama Earth. Our mama. We are trashing her our home. She is our hearth. We're getting in there and just trashing her. Trashing her water that she gives us and our food and her animals. What? <laughs> She's our home. Self, others, and the planet. All of this is intertwined. We must love ourselves, we must love others, and we must love the planet. If we're going to survive, but it's not only just for surviving. Love is delicious. Have you been in love? Have you loved a baby? Have you loved an animal? Have you lived, listened to a love song? It's not just about survival anymore, but thank you. Sure. It's because love is delicious. Caring is delicious. Feeling cared for? Ugh. It's the best. Connecting. Have you had the experience of connecting with another? It's amazing. It's beautiful. So let me get back to empathy and, emp and, and empath. Empathy is what allows us to care for others. It's core to our human operating system, correct? Because it initiates care and care helps us survive as a human species. Okay, got it. The empath has the capacity to feel at turbocharged levels and not just feel what's visible, but to feel what's invisible. 
energetic frequencies in a room. The empath has psychic abilities that way. And what I mean by psychic abilities is the ability to see things that are unseen, feel things that are un, um, that are not visible to us and know things. There's a knowingness that happens. The empath naturally, naturally leans towards harmony. They harmonize environments. Part of the empath's operating system that's very particular is that they come into groups, families, places, situations, and they are the harmonizers. They are the ones that help heal conflict. They are the connectors. And that's just part of who they are. You might know someone who's an empath. You might be an empath yourself. It is very, very obvious that I'm an empath. Because my whole life mission, who I am with people, who I am at home, is about harmony, is about connection, is about intimacy, is about collaboration. That's why the empath has a really hard time with the superior, inferior paradigm. We love collaboration. I actually feel, I've nuanced that sometimes parenting has been difficult for me because I don't love the idea that I'm the know-it-all parent who gets to sort of um, dominate my child. I much prefer the idea that we are doing this together, even though, of course, I keep boundaries and I'm firm and I know what feels unsafe, all of that. But I like the idea of living in a home where I teach everyone in my house how to collaborate. If we all do a task, it's easier for all of us how to cooperate, how to connect, how to commune. So a big thing in my home is conversation around the table. I love that. There's nothing more I adore than that is just the, I love conversations around a table and guess what? That is home. That is humanity all over the world. There's nothing better than great food and a great conversation. Let's say you're with the guys and everyone's laughing and eating and having a beer and eating wings, conversations around the table. Girls, girls night out, conversations, families, families who talk, discuss, beautiful humanity. That's what the empath does. That's what the empath prefers. That's how the empath lives. And so all I'm saying is empath are great people to have on El Camino, on the path back home. This is a great time for the empath to shine, to come forth in what they know to do because we run a certain type of software. If all of us have the same human operating system, the empath software, feelingware, thoughtware, is very distinct and it's super, 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 super helpful in this moment, in this existential moment in society, in humanity's society, in this moment in evolution. Certainly, the empath is central to what I'm asking for because the empath will help me. That's why I do empath leaders will help me bring people together from all walks of life and sit them at the table and bring them home and start talking about the concepts of communion, of collaboration, of cooperation. I call it the C-suite of connection, of convening. All of these are concepts that the empath does naturally. And so all I'm saying is that for this moment or for what I'm trying to call out, the call that I'm setting, the trumpet on the top of the mountain that I am saying is this is a time of humanity where we don't want war anymore, where we don't want extinction, where we don't want the same fight, where we don't want the same neighbors that are just fighting all the time. Enough already with war vibe. Enough. Let's try something different. Let's try something different. So that's where I see the empath in all of this 
is that their specific, our specific type of software helps us helps us on the path, on the road, en el camino back home. Humanity's camino back home and the individual's camino back home. Camino, of course, meaning path, meaning road. The idea of the road is so important. Some of you know that I talk a lot about Humanity 101. This is it. This is Humanity 101. What I'm describing, these are my concepts. And everything else that I do is in service of humanity 101, is of humanity coming back to 101, to a priori, to the prologue, to human intimacy, to care. And the empath has it. And all other humans who have empathy can do this work. So there's no separateness between empaths and other humans at all. I'm just saying there's a group of folks like, okay, if I want to send a message, let's say in the Aztec times or in the Incan times, there were people who ran very fast, very, very fast. The Incas, and they were known, they were, they were fierce. These runners, these messengers were fierce because they had amazing stamina and they ran, ran very fast in Inca times. And so those were the people who were the messengers. They were just good at it. They had their, the, their physical structure and their stamina allowed for it. So those were the people to call forth as runners to get the messages. That's what I'm doing with empaths. They are a particular part of the human tapestry that have this type of software, this type of emotional and cognitive structure and leanings and urges. I'm calling them to help me do this work, to help me do this call out during this particular time. So I just want you to know, and so we can frame what it is. They are the messengers that for me, this is all within my own paradigm, all within my own belief system. And if it resonates with you, awesome. If it doesn't, it's okay. That's, that's part of our human tapestry as well. We get to choose the paradigms, the belief systems, the perceptual fields that we're working through. We get to choose them. And there's so many, right? Remember my last podcast, I talked about frequencies. What frequency are you in? What are we choosing? What's our vote? So this, all I'm doing with this podcast is saying, this is my vote. My vote is that humans come back to themselves and let's provide services and people and modalities. And I, certainly I'm, I'm doing that. And let's call humanity back home to themselves. That's my deal. And let's provide groups of people along the way for that. And I, in particular, am saying, empaths, can you do this? And let's say you don't identify as an empath, but you know that you have empathy. Join us on El Camino. Join. If you're deciding that you're done with the war vibe, that conflict, that what you want to do is move from survival into thrival land, from being trauma informed to being trauma risen, trauma rising. And I want to remind all of you that I have had complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And all that means is that it's um, an experience of trauma that you have for multiple years and in multiple occasions. So simple traumatic stress disorder is based on maybe one event. Maybe as an adult or as in a teenager, you had a great childhood, but you had this one event where you were in a car crash. That would be simple trauma. Complex trauma is the experience of having repetitive experiences of trauma over a series of years or over a period of time. That becomes complex post-traumatic stress disorder. I am not only a survivor, but a riser. And that is why my message is out there. And the side effects of that, of course, are um, 
insecure attachment, disorganized attachment, high anxiety, for some folks, depression, ADHD. There's all sorts of symptomology that comes from this, uh, from complex post-traumatic stress. So what I'm actually saying with that is I know what it's like. I know what it's like to have to spelunk and crawl myself through really, really hard memories and places. I know what it's like to fight. I know what it's like to be in the war vibe. I know what it's like to crave vengeance. I know what it's like. And I've had to use my own tools. I used a lot of the dynamic meditation method. I did go to 12-step programs. I did. I was in group psychotherapy. I did become a therapist because this is the embodiment of my whole life, is the human coming back to themselves me coming back to myself. And I don't want to keep spreading my generational and ancestral trauma because I have it from both sides. And I have a ton of compassion for both sides of my lineage, a ton. But I couldn't get to that compassion until I cleaned myself up. Until I got on the other side of the toad, that movie is Pan's Labyrinth. It's a very, very extremely strong movie. But it's just, there's certain images in movies that I think of the human journey, obviously. So some of the places that we have to travel through on El Camino are hard, but that is the Holy Grail. That is the quest. And we don't do it alone. We can't. It's too hard. Detoxing. Last night I watched um, Walk the Line, and it's the story of Johnny Cash and June Carter. And you, you know, there's this whole section of the movie about his detoxing, and it's brutal. It's hard to detox. It's hard to clean up. But she was there. The beautiful part of that 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 part was she was there, supporting him. And guess what? Her family was there for her. They all moved into his house. June Carter's mom and dad kept the dealers away from the house. So what was most striking for me about that was the detox for sure, but was the fact that everyone was there, that, that the whole family was like, we are here to, to guard, to protect, to put this in a circle of love and light. Well, this person is going through this. We claim protection. We claim safety. We claim care. While he was going through his body, purging the trauma. So yes, I call upon us to do that for each other. We can't do it alone. We won't do it alone. And of course, on the other side of that detox was his unbelievable, sober, clean, beautiful success where he lived in love because at the other side of this is love. We can call it self-forgiveness or forgiveness, but really it's what we started the podcast with. It's self-love. And he and June Carter's love was amazing. Their in loveness, what they had to go through to get to that type of love. And guess what? It is part of your humanity to have that as a beacon. That's where we go. That's our treasure is the self-love that we get to give to others. Recovery is hard, but we do it and we do it with each other. And we do it as a humanity. So yes, let's come home. Let's take El Camino home to the self, El Camino home to each other. Let's walk each other home. Let's stop being homesick. Let's slay the dragons together. Not the dragons, actually. I love dragons. I love dragons. Let's slay our internal demons together. Let's commune with Mama Earth because she's our home. 
It's love. It's cleaner up. I live by the river and it's so beautiful. I thank her every morning, but it's hard because I see the pollution. I see plastic bottles everywhere. So I'm going to call. I'm going to call to see what I can do to help clean this beautiful river up because that's my mom. That's my home. What do you say? What do you say, folks? I hope this touches you. I hope you feel it in your fiery human heart. I hope you get it. And yeah, those were the answers. I was like, what are my main concepts? That's the concept. That's humanity 101. That's the importance of the empath. That's the importance of care and empathy. We're here for it. I'm here for it. And I just hope you join me. Let's have one big party. And let's not just be in survival. Okay? Done. Let's, let's be done with being in survival. And let's trauma rise and be in heaven on earth together. And that's all heaven on earth is. It's coming back to our intimacy. It's coming back to a calm central nervous system in our body. Because that's the other part. Sorry, I'm going to keep going. Our body is our home. We incarnated for a reason. Our body is our home. So it's time to calm our central nervous system. But in order to calm it, we've got to use our operating system of breath, of touch, of cleaning out the drama, because trauma has been memorized. It's lodged. It's big blobs in our body that won't allow us to come back home. On el camino, let's clean it up. Let's come back. Let's learn ways to decrease the anxiety, which makes us hypervigilance, which makes us feel that everything is danger, which makes us be on the defensive and attack. This is, this is pretty basic. It's pretty basic humanity. If I'm anxious, I feel like danger is around the corner, which makes me feel defensive, which means I'm, I'm on the verge of attack, which means I feel like I'm about to get hurt. So I've got to come back and calm and believe, and believe in love, and believe in other humans, and believe in communion and connection again. Now, some of you might say, hey, but there is war out there, and there are attacks, and people are cruel and mean, and that is true. As I say, yes, yeah, some men do cheat. When women are like, yeah, but all men cheat. Some men cheat, and that's all because they haven't come home to themselves. That's all it is. Across the board. That's all it is. It's a coming home to self. And some don't. It's all about the paradigm you want to choose. Listen, I, it's not that I'm saying I'm not Pollyanna. People do attack. People are cruel. They've been cruel to me. Absolutely. Yay or nay. Like or no like. Like or no like. Like or no like. Yes. All of history shows that. It ain't working. That's all I'm saying. It's not working. An eye for an eye is not working. Killing ourselves is not working. Hating ourselves is not working. Whether it's be because I'm an individual hating myself or humanity hating myself. So all I'm saying is, let's propose some other options here. Let's just propose some other options. Let's find other ways. And, you know, I'm proposing heaven on earth. I'm proposing trauma rising. I'm proposing care I'm proposing healing the root chakra from the from from the bottom, uh, bottom up, so that that little building of ourselves can be go straight up into creation, into will, which is sacral and then solar plexus chakras. Free will, we choose. You get to choose. You get to choose. I get to choose, and I get to propose something and see. Who's going to join the committee of this? Who's going to who's gonna be like, yeah, I'll be on your board. Let's do this work. Anyway, I don't even know how many minutes have passed by. Again, things are going to be repetitive, but as humans, we need to repeat things in order to learn them. And that that's beautiful. That's part of our humanity. Little kids need to hear over and over, go brush your teeth, go brush your teeth. And after a while, they just start brushing their teeth. And imagine if we did that to babies. You're amazing. You did it. Look at you go. Crying is okay. Have your feelings. Imagine if we repeated that over and over. I'm going to be repetitive. And I'm going to keep calling. And I'm going to keep sharing. 
And thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. Just because, let's do what we always do, which is lean back. And when I ask you to lean back, let me tell you what I do. I do this in The Empath Leader, is when we lean back, we're not leaning towards the outside. We actually have um, a metaphorical but also physical sensation of being back in our bodies. So if you lean back, and you really take a seat in your hips, in your throne, the throne of your body. It reminds you, oh, I'm coming back home. I'm coming back home to myself. And then when I ask you to do three breaths, when we do three breaths together, first of all, you're calming your central nervous system, right? You're calming your own system, which allows us to be enthroned more. But also what we're doing together is that we then become a group of people that become one organism because we're all breathing together. And Joe Dispenza talks a lot about coherence and congruence. And all that is is alignment. All of a sudden, it's like when a baby, when a baby sleeps on you, the, the, the level of peace that that provides, it's so amazing. And mostly it's because you're coherently and congruently with alignment, breathing together. It's one way to calm your children down, parents. If you see that your child is, is frustrated, is having a hard time, sit them down and just say, okay, we're going to take three breaths together. And so it puts us in this electromagnetic field. Not only is our personal electromagnetic field calming down, and finding its secure base, but with each other, we begin to do it. So everything, right? Everything comes together in alignment. So let's lean back. And I like to put a hand on my heart or on my chest, because then I acknowledge the body as my home. And so together, let's take a deep breath. And now, and let's take a deep breath. And let's take a deep breath. You know, and as I like to say in my groups, notice that you're feeling calmer, gentler, softer. Thanks for joining me.